Hi everyone, uh, Callum here from FS Elite and I am at the uh, Infinite Flight stand with Laura, the CEO of Infinite Flight and also Jason, part of the marketing team as well. Um, so we're just going to spend a few minutes just talking to them, uh, understanding a little bit more about the project uh, and I've also got a few questions for you guys as well. Is that okay? Excellent. Um, so uh, just a quick few introductions from you both. Uh, Laura, maybe we just start with you. Um, so my name is Laura. I am the CEO and co-founder of Flying Development Studio. So we're the company that built uh, Infinite Flight. And uh, we started that company with Philippe, my co-founder, in 2010-11-ish. Uh, uh, the first version was on um, Windows Phone, and it didn't work out so well. Uh, so we shipped on. Uh, we started working on iOS shortly after that, and the initial release was in uh, 2012 uh, for iOS, and then Android in 2013. And we've been expanding ever since. Excellent. Thank you very much. Uh, and Jason, maybe just a little bit about you? Yeah, sure. So uh, I started out with Infinite Flight as uh, actually an ATC moderator uh, when they launched that. Uh, and, it, and then I started a podcast called Flightcast uh, just to, to sort of based, inspired by Infinite Flight, um, which continues, uh, although now at this point the relationship kind of grew into um, a, a working one. So I'm on the team as uh, digital marketing, um, PR, that kind of stuff. Excellent, good, and that's really cool that you've come from like the community background as well, and you've managed to kind of integrate yourself into like the development of the of the project as well. Yeah, and that's the case with uh, several of us actually. The community managers and uh, even at least one of the developers, uh, two developers are are on board as a result of being part of the community. Excellent, fantastic. Um, so uh, FS Elite users are typically geared towards the uh, the PC based stuff, so like you're prepared, X Plane, Aerofly, um, and FS Expo has been quite full of all of that here today. So having Infinite Flight is quite a unique product. Um, so maybe uh, Laura, you could just explain to our viewers kind of what Infinite Flight is and kind of why you know it's such an important product for you guys. Okay, so Infinite Flight is. It's not a competitor to other simulators that are out here. Uh, it's mostly an alternative. So when you're not at home and you don't have your big rig, your big computer, uh, you still want to get that flight fix. Um, you can just pop your phone out of your pocket or your iPad out of your bag, and you can start flying. And you're not really constrained to just um, your own solo mode, because if you have network connection, you can play with uh, in a multiplayer system with everybody. So we don't have all the systems, but it's enough to get that that um, little boost of flying in a rush that you need to get when you really want to get to you know stop flying something. Yeah, so like if you're out at you know out at town or at work or something, then it's just you pull up your phone and you can just practice a few circuits and stuff using yeah. some of the aircraft. Excellent, good. Um, so I I think explaining it is one thing. So I think let's uh, have Jason kind of show off a little bit and maybe you talk us through yeah. kind of what Jason's showing off as well. Okay. And there's also one thing that I wanted to mention about about the um, how it's how it's important for us is we're all coming from pretty much everyone in the company coming from a flight simulation background. I was an avid flight sim five ninety eight two thousand. I played Pro Pilot. I played Fly Fly Two. Uh, I was in my biggest like I was a fan of Flight Unlimited Two, Two and Three were my like the best flight sims ever. Um, so we're we're not coming here out of interest for the market just because we're like, oh, you know, some people are interested, let's try to make money. It's not the point. It's really, we're, we're passionate about what we do. And I think it shows in the product. Excellent. Yeah, and I think when Jason shows us, we'll kind of see some of that passion and actually how impressive the technology you guys have managed to cram into a, an app, essentially, for a mobile phone. So, uh, uh, Jason, I don't know what you're going to show us off today. Uh, so maybe you can kind of talk a little bit before and then I can pass it along. Yeah, that sounds good. And Laura can talk while I'm flying. But this is, so what we've got here is a actual pre-release of the TBM 930. Um, this is the new air aircraft that's coming out next um, and what we'll do is we'll just fly in solo mode here so we have a few modes you can fly in uh, live mode which is uh, with other pilots that are flying around on the server um, there are three servers and Lorik you can get into this maybe a little bit more but um, we'll be just flying in solo mode so uh, it's just us and then we have a replay system so you can replay the last five or so minutes of your flight um, and we can spawn anywhere. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to, I'm Canadian, so I'm going to go to uh, Toronto. Actually, let's do something. We'll go to Vancouver because it's prettier. 
so you just type in your you type in your uh, airport there, and you can select it. What we're going to do in solo mode is we're just going to start on two eight right because then we don't have to taxi, and you hit fly. So. I'll just do a little overview of the TBM maybe while we're sitting on the runway and then uh, we'll get going and we'll, I'll, I'll let Laura take it over. So we just calibrate it like right there. We have camera views right here. Um, when you're in, um, I guess fuel consumption exists in solo as well. Um, so we have fuel consumption, you can set your weight and balance if we go in here. Um, we can adjust weight and balance and you can see that your uh, max takeoff weight and everything changes or uh, is reflected there. You can change the cargo and everything, first officer weight, everything like that. Uh, cockpit view here, let's put the brakes on. And then we've got some uh, cool animations. If we go over here we can open up the main door. Um, and then we have lots of camera views, and I'll get into some of those while we're flying. But for now, we'll set a little... Uh... So the one thing I noticed was the animation on here is very, very smooth. Um, what kind of FPS do you run at the minute on here? Um, so the frame rate is pretty much 60 frames per second constantly on those modern iPads. Even if you get an iPhone 7 or 6, uh, if you're solo on the 6 solo, you still get 60 frames per second. Uh, and the 7 is just, uh, from the 7 on, it's just smooth. Uh, wow. And with a lot of traffic. And there's so much going on. So there's lots of texture work. There's the flight dynamics. There's obviously the, the other background textures and stuff going on. And yet you still manage to achieve such a high frame rate. Is there, do you worry about battery consumption? Is there anything in place at the minute that will, if people want to do a long haul flight, that they're going to be able to, to do one? So there's multiple levels that we have. The first one is um, the frame rate limiter. So this is, on these devices here, we have set up to 60 frames per second, so it looks more impressive. Uh, but the battery life, of course, is impacted, and it, it heats up a little more. Um, you can also reduce to 30 frames per second. This is the default setting. And for really long haul flights, we have a, a low power mode, which drops the frame rate to 10 frames per second. So it's basically any, even like a 50, uh, 500 milliamp charger can maintain a, a charge when it's, because the 10 frames per second is nothing, and the device is just sleeping. Um, so that allows us to do like all these long flights, even on older Android devices, which have um, kind of like dying batteries, and um, that allows them to do long flights as well. And I think what I saw as well, what also might help some users, is that you can adjust each setting, so you don't always have to play on high fidelity settings, right? Yeah. So that's, that's also, again, really impressive that you've got that technology crammed into, into just an app. So uh, I don't know if you want to just talk through maybe some of the bits Jason's doing right now. I think he's just uh, flying around at the minute, panning around the camera. So, so yeah, so Jason's going to set up a flight plan. So you have this map that covers the entire world. Um, so that's, if you want to fly the entire world, it's part of the subscription um, package, where you have multiplayer, uh, the entire world, and uh, aircraft, like all the aircraft that are included. And you can set up your flight plan. We also have third-party uh, add-ons that you can uh, use to transfer the flight plans directly into uh, Infinite Flight. You can also synchronize Infinite Flight with Four Flight if you have another device on the same network. Uh, we support that. Um, and then you, once you're done with your flight plan, you just hit the nav button, uh, set the autopilot, and then you're good to go for ho however long it takes. Um, so we set up for like a, apparently an ILS approach somewhere. Um, so in solo mode, you can just shoot your own ILS approach. But if you're in multiplayer mode, you can talk. If there's an active approach controller, you can talk to them when you're, you know, 50 miles out and say, "I want an ILS approach in that airport," yeah. and they're just going to vector you all the way down. And then when you're inside the localizer, tell you to talk to the tower. Excellent. Um, so just on the multiplayer aspects, I know you're still flying at the minute. Um, I, did you want to show the uh, the live map at the moment? So. So this map is um, is uh, was built from uh, by, by uh, an employee of the company who used to be an intern and now he's working with us. And what it shows is all the flights currently going on uh, in the live server. So we can see there's a lot of them, a lot of people doing the transitions over the Atlantic, and you can click on them. And this is using the API that we've set in place. Um, so we have two APIs, one on each um, on device itself, where you can control the axis of the joystick. Uh, you can control the anything that we do in the app can be done through the API. 
Uh, and this is through our web API, which exposes the flight statistics, the uh, real-time uh, user data, the flight planning, all that type of stuff is, is available to that application. That's very impressive. And there's, uh, how many pilots would you say there are currently flying right now, just looking at that screen? We typically have, so across all servers, we typically have between 700 to 1.6K people flying uh, at one time. We've had, like the, on, on big release days, we've had almost 2,600 people flying on all servers, something like that. That's very impressive. 6,000? 2,600. 2,600. Wow. E even so, that's still very impressive for for something that people are using on their mobile devices. And it's funny how, how we see the, the, the routes that are real life routes because yeah. you, know, you can see all these Qatar type you know, airways, people going over Turkey and, uh, and usually people actually go on, on um, flight radar and get the flight plan and transfer them directly to the app with the third party tools that are available. Excellent, good. Actually, I could have done that. I could have gone to a real world flight, copied the entire uh, route, and pasted it into the map screen. So if you go here and you search, instead of searching for waypoints, you just paste the entire route in there, and it builds your flight plan right away. Wow, very cool. Um, so I'm sure there's going to be a lot of, so obviously in the prepared to next plane world, you have all these developers that produce different add-ons, so for scenery, for aircraft. Do you guys have some sort of ecosystem in place for allowing third parties to develop for uh, infinite flight? So at this point, the only option we have is through the API. So there's, no, you can't add new airplanes, you can't add new uh, scenery. We are thinking of those things because it's, we know that it's important and all the simulators that did not have that kind of ended up badly. Um, so it's, but the, the issue from our standpoint with these devices is that they're kind of locked down. It's hard to actually upload things to the device that we can access. Um, but we have an internal SDK, obviously. Um, so at some point, maybe we'll, we'll open that up. Um, that could be that could be something we, we, we've discussed it, of course. Excellent. But the uh, best avenue is through the API. We've had we had um, maybe three, four developers who are working on projects. One has um, voice commands. It's on the App Store. You can just like you know, it has a lot of enhancements to the app, like voice commands and. Uh, Callouts and things like that. Um, tons of like little add-ons. Did you mention ForeFlight Connect? Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Um, so uh, just out of interest, so for anyone who's kind of watching at home, uh, how much is this? Where can they kind of download it? Is it all through the app stores and stuff? Um, just maybe a little bit more detail on that for anyone who's watching right now. So it's on the uh, iOS and Android App Store. It's uh, $4.99 for the app itself. It comes with 14 planes. A handful of regions uh, in satellite imagery, and um, so that allows for solo flight. Um, and this is, this is a, it's a significant package uh, for five dollars, and you can get, like I said before, the, all these subscriptions. So that's the whole planet with um, satellite imagery, uh, multiplayer, and uh, all the planes included in one uh, in one package is ten ten dollars a month. It's uh, $49.99 for six months and uh, $79.99 for a year. Excellent. So you have like a range of things that if people can kind of try it, dig their like yeah. feet in just a little bit, test the waters, and if they do like it, then obviously they can kind of yeah. subscribe for even longer. Cool. Um, so I think that's kind of it from me. Do you guys have anything else you want to add before we wrap this up? The community? Yes. So our, here. <laughs> I was going to do an approach. Our community is a really, really important part of who Infinite Flight is. So as, as we mentioned before, I came from the community. Uh, we have two developers who came from the community. And our forum, I don't know the numbers, Laura, right now, but we're several tens of thousands strong on the forum, 30, 40, 50,000, something like that. Um, and so if you go to community.infinite-flight.com, you can be a part of that community. Um, we have real world pilots that are contributing to um, giving, giving people advice and kind of contributing statistics on aircraft and things like that. So we're very, very community focused, especially with our live ATC server. That's a good way to get connected if you want more information on um, how to become ATC in Infinite Flight. We have an approval process so you can start out on the um, server where you just you can play around and anybody can do ATC or you can uh, learn how to become expert server ATC as well. So we do a practical test where some people actually fly around for you. and um, So it's a strong community and really, really important. We appreciate all of our community members, and we, we wouldn't be at the level that we're at without them. So it's 
Excellent. And I, and, I, and I definitely think that's where, you know, flight sims really thrive is through the community aspect as well. Um, so both, thank you very much for your time. Um, and uh, we look forward to seeing kind of how this develops in the future. So enjoy the rest of the show. Thanks, Carl. Thank Take care. Thank you.